Kristen Thane. I am a veterinarian. I am a resident, first year resident, at Tufts Cummings School of Veterinary Medicine in large animal medicine. So a lot of what we do is very, very low tech. So I'll just go over a little of that because this is essential stuff too. So things like a stethoscope, thermometer. We use many of our senses. We do not so much use taste anymore. <laughs> they did in the old days, but we use the other four senses. So we certainly look at things, we feel things, sometimes we smell things, some things can smell a little gross, but it can give a lot of information. And we listen a lot, um, both to what our patient is telling us non-verbally and also what their owners are telling us. But we do have a lot of high-tech gadgets that we use too. One of our bigger pieces of machinery, this is an MRI. So you can do an MRI on a horse. You can do a CT on a horse. The, the technology is there. The downside is you can't make it bigger than we have right now. So one of you guys has to figure out how to make our CTs and our MRIs able to fit an entire horse body. And that's my challenge for you all. Because right now we can really do, you can do one limb at a time. And that's what we do. So we can look at all of the different limbs. We can look at the head. We can look at a whole body of a baby. But you can't look at the, you know, the, the basic midsection of an adult horse or anything that size. So that's your goal. Computers are mostly used for the records keeping, but in terms of technology, it plays a role in the, particularly the imaging diagnostics that we do. So all of our x-rays are digital at this point. All of our CT and MRI, the more advanced imaging, as well as ultrasound, is all digitally based at this point to, to make it easier to transfer to other practices and share amongst other colleagues um, and, and be able to retrieve it much more easily as well. The limitation of radiographs is that it's taking a two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional structure. So everything, you know, if it's taking a picture of me like this, everything from here to here gets smushed into one picture. The nice thing about a CT is that it's going to take, uh, it's, it's still radiographs basically, but it's taking lots and lots and lots of slices. So you can look all throughout the different planes of, the, of your whatever area of your patient you're looking at to get an idea of what exactly is wrong where. So this is a CT machine, again, small size, so a whole alpaca could fit through it, but again, a whole horse could not, its abdomen particularly. So you get an image that looks something like this. And just to give you some bearings, it'll keep looping. Um, what it's doing as you're seeing the, the image refresh is it takes a slice like this, then like this, then like this. So it's basically working its way this way on the skull. Uh, it's coming like that. So just for right now, look at it for symmetry. And you'll see that, um, and we'll, we'll show a little bit of a, a slower image, but look particularly here and here on the, where the right, so other big clue is that on, on any radiographs or imaging like this, left and right are flipped. That's why it looks a little strange to you guys. But um, that area looks not symmetrical, right? The left is not the same as the right. So if we highlight some of those areas, we'll see there's an area sort of towards the front, closest to the nose, that looks nice and symmetrical. Those two sides look even, right? Even, even. When you look further back where that swelling is, you've got sort of normal looking bone here and all kinds of crunchy ugliness there. Crunchy ugliness is not the medical term, but we'll get to that. <laughs> so nice and smooth, crunchy ugliness. Similarly, you can put you know, any, any kind of slant that you want on these. So this particular shot is going like this. So a slice like this, a slice like this, a slice like this, blah, blah, blah. So it's coming in a different plane. Again, working its way down like this. So slice, 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 slice. And again, looking for areas of asymmetry, um, now that you know to sort of look for it, you can find that area where there's a big uh, big crunchiness, right? So again, if we pull that out, this is the nice normal mandible. Again, remember jaw. This is abnormal. This is obviously abnormal. So from that, if we say, well, we've got this problem. It's a surgical issue. We can say, look, surgeons, we need this to come out. Here's what his skull looks like. This isn't just a generic skull of you know, any alpaca. This is a representation of his specific skull. So you can say, here it is from all its different angles. How are we going to go in, see exactly where we need to make our incision, what exactly needs to come out? So this can be really, really, really helpful to the surgeons to be able to plan their approach and figure out what exactly is going to be 
um, removed, in, at least in this case. So our alpaca friend in fact had surgery. His condition was, was called mandibular osteomyelitis. It's infection of the bone. Alpacas and llamas can be prone to this, just the way their teeth are, the diet they eat. Um, so it's something that we do fairly commonly see. After surgery, he was on a course of antibiotics. And happily, he went home, got to hang out with his friends, and be a happy alpaca back with the herd. I'm Courtney from Holy Kai, and I was wondering, how do you get the, animal, the horses and alpacas to stay still when you give them the MRI or CT? Some procedures we can restrain them adequately, particularly pets, um, dogs and cats. They're used to us patting them. They'll just sit quietly. Other procedures where we really need them to be very still, um, we'll either sedate them heavily or actually put them under full anesthesia. We have an anesthesiologist, doctors who just do anesthesia at our hospital um, who can do that. Unlike in human medicine, we don't tend to paralyze them and make them not breathe. So that does change how we interpret our images a little bit. Um, so just, just to keep in mind, if you've ever been to a human hospital and seen their imaging or their procedures done, it's a little different. But if we need them really absolutely still, we give them anesthesia and keep them asleep until we're done taking the images and then we wake them back up. Explore anything that they think is interesting. There are so many opportunities in the fields of science uh, that it's, it's mind-boggling, um, but whatever may strike an interest is worth exploration. You can find your niche anywhere. Uh, there's so many opportunities available if you're willing to explore a little bit and find where you feel most comfortable and where you can do the most difference.